Good morning everyone, how are you doing? It's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today I'm just outside Brighton and we're coming to find the final resting place of Nicola Fellows and Karen Hadaway. Um, you may have heard their story from the 80s. Um, they got titled Babes in the Woods. Now I know there are several Babes in the Woods stories over the years of different murders. And um, this is the one that's probably most prominent to me, it sticks out the most because I was a child when it happened. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's just always stuck with me about what happened to those poor, young, innocent girls. Now I must say that today's video won't necessarily contain graphic nature, but it will contain things of a sensitive nature. Okay, so if it's not for you, then now would be a good time to, to turn off. However, as usual, it's always done with the utmost respect for the victims and their families. And I want to tell their story. We've got to keep their story alive. And that's the reason why I do these crime file ones is um, not to glorify the person that did it. I don't care about them. I don't give two monkeys about them. But it's to remember the people and their families that had to live and go through this and respect to the ones that sadly are no longer here with us due to the actions of again using this terminology monster because I don't want to say anything else about them it's what they are I'll tell you some more information about it now the Babes in the Wood murders were the murders of two nine-year-old girls Nicola Fellows and Karen Hadaway on the 9th of October 1986 by a 20 year old local roofer, Russell Bishop, in Wild Park, Brighton. Bishop was tried and acquitted in 1987. The case remained open until the 10th of December 2018 when Bishop was found guilty of the murders in a second trial. The investigation into the two girls' murders is the largest and longest running inquiry ever conducted by Sussex Police. Nicola and Karen were best friends who lived close to one another at the Musselcombe estate in north of Brighton. They both attended different schools, but at around 3.30pm on the 9th of October 1986, the two returned home from school before going out to play. At around 5pm, Susan Fellows saw her daughter and Karen playing with a roller boot, and that was the last time she saw her daughter alive. When seen by a 14-year-old acquaintance near a parade of shops, in Lewis Road area, the girls were told to go home as their parents would become worried about them. Nicola reportedly told Karen, come on, let's go over to the park, referring to the wild park where they were not allowed to go. At around 6.30 p.m. the girls were seen near a police box on Lewis Road where Bishop was also seen nearby wearing what appeared to be a light blue top. That same day, Bishop had gone to Nicola's house to speak to a lodger who lived there Nicola told Bishop to go away and called his girlfriend a slag. When the girls failed to return home by their bedtime, their parents panicked. Karen's mother, Michelle, made a 999 call. A search party of around 200 police and neighbours were organised. A helicopter was brought in to help with the search in Wild Park. Bishop joined the search, claiming his terrier Misty was a highly trained tracker dog and insured for £17,000. The bodies of the girls were found in Wild Park by searchers Kevin Rowland and his friend Matthew Marchant on the afternoon of the 10th of October 1986. The girls' bodies were found hidden in a makeshift den in the park. Both had been strangled and sexually assaulted. Bishop fell under suspicion due to his close involvement in the search when the bodies of the girls were found. Bishop was close by and ran towards the scene with a police constable. However, the officer recalled that Bishop did not get close enough to even see them properly. Bishop's story was littered with inconsistencies. He told detectives on the evening in question he had gone to Musselcombe because he intended to steal a car from the nearby university campus. He also claimed that he had gone to a newsagent to buy a newspaper, but realised he had no money. Bishop told detectives he planned to see his teenage girlfriend that evening but failed to turn up because he bought some cannabis, went home and got stoned. 
He also tailored his story to fit the evidence, claiming he had felt the girl's necks for a pulse after finding them dead. To explain any potential exchange of trace evidence on the bodies. Due to the series of inconsistencies, Bishop was arrested on suspicion of murder on the 31st of October. Bishop first became the centre of media attention in October 1986 when he was arrested on suspicion of the murders. However, he was acquitted on both rape and murder charges at his trial in December 1987 at Lewis Crown Court. After two hours deliberation by the jury, Bishop was ultimately acquitted. He later sold his story as a wrongfully accused person to the news of the world for £15,000. The acquittal was later attributed to a series of blunders on the prosecution's case. The pathologist and forensic investigation team failed to record the temperatures of the bodies and therefore could not accurately state a time of death. At the trial, the prosecution suggested the girls were killed between 6.15pm and 6.30pm. Without scientific evidence to back up the time of the murders, the prosecution could not challenge Bishop's alibis on the night of the murders themselves. Though the girls were fatally strangled, neither measurements of hand marks around their necks or fingerprints left by the strangler were taken. Forensic scientists did not analyse blood discovered on Karen's underwear. A key piece of the prosecution's case rested on the recovery of a blue Pinto brand sweatshirt. The top was found close to the railway line of Musselcombe Station. Police believed Bishop discarded the top after attacking and killing the girls and were confident the clothing had a cache of forensic clues. The police did not properly preserve the evidence, allowing Bishop's defence team to cast doubt on the reliability of the material. Under questioning, Bishop denied that the sweatshirt belonged to him, but his girlfriend Jennifer Johnson alleged the clothing was Bishop's. Prosecution hoped this would undermine Bishop's credibility and portray him as a liar who was trying to distance himself from a crucial piece of evidence. However, at the trial, Johnson changed her story, telling the jury she had never seen the top before. Johnson also gave statements to defence counsel alleging that she had never made her witness statement confirming Bishop's ownership of the sweatshirt and that he had been fabricated by the police and her initials forged. The judge, Justice Sheeman, directed the jury that unless they were sure that the girls were dead by 6.30pm, they should acquit. The prosecution believed that the girls were killed between 5.15pm and 630 However, witnesses stated they saw the girls alive at 6.30pm and Bishop leaving Wild Park at 630 Bishop was convicted in December 1990 of a similar attack on another Brighton girl. He was found guilty of the kidnapping, molestation and attempted murder of a seven-year-old girl in Whitehawk 10 months earlier and was sentenced to at least 14 years before eligible release. Nicholas' father, Barry Fellows, was arrested in 2009 at his home in Esselmore, Port Cheshire on suspicion of conspiracy to rape his daughter. Douglas Judd was also arrested on suspicion of rape. A spokeswoman for the Sussex Police said the investigation into sexual abuse allegations was unrelated to the ongoing murder. Both men were eventually released without charge. Bishop's girlfriend later assaulted police when they arrested him for the subsequent attack following his murder acquittals and told them the true killer was the father of one of the victims. This was later described as, by a judge as disgraceful and unfounded rumour which was started in the news of the world, which she was happy to repeat. He also jailed her for lying at the original trial. Double jeopardy rules had seemed to eliminate any possibility that Bishop might one day face a new trial for the murders. But new legislation in 2005 meant that a criminal could face a new trial for a crime if substantial new evidence came to light. In September 2006, the High Court decided that there was not enough evidence for Bishop to face a second trial for the murders. Eurofin's Forensic Services was engaged, the same forensic team that helped bring the killers of Stephen Lawrence to justice. Senior scientific advisor Roy Green at Eurofin's was asked in August 2012 to re-examine the evidence and recovered a billion to one DNA match linking Bishop to the discarded sweatshirt. 
A taping from Karen's left forearm was also found to contain Bishop's DNA. On the 10th of May 2016, however, a man initially not named for legal reasons was arrested. Bishop was removed from his cell at Franklin Prison in County Durham and taken to the local police station where he was arrested for the murders of Karen and Nicola. In December 2017, the Court of Appeal ordered quashing the 1987 acquittals and called for a second jury trial for Bishop. On the 2nd of February 2018, the Press Association reported that Bishop was to stand trial at the Old Bailey accused of the murder of the two girls killed in Brighton in 1986. The trial was scheduled for 15th of October 2018. Bishop was charged and pleaded not guilty on the 10th of December 2018, but was found guilty of murder. Prosecutor Brian Altman, QC, told the jury the case against Bishop was not just based on his attempt to kill another child in a similar manner, but on other compelling evidence. He explained significant part of the inquiry had been to re-evaluate various areas of scientific work that were performed for the purposes of the 1987 trial, but through the lens of modern day techniques, DNA profiling, which although available in 1986 and 87, was still in its infancy. The jury was told that in 2014, samples taken from the left forearm of one of the victims in 1986 had been re-examined in the hope of finding traces of DNA. The yielded skin flakes, which were the subjected to ultra-modern profiling techniques to produce a result that was one billion times more likely if Bishop's DNA was present than if it was absent. Bishop suggested that Nicola's father, Barney, was to blame, telling the jury the police spent 32 years building a case against the wrong man. Bishop was not in court every day for his nine-week trial and complained to the judge about feeling suicidal over his temporary stay at Balmarsh, requesting a return to Franklin. At the 2018 trial, the prosecution put forward a different timeline. Altman presented evidence that the girls were alive at 6.30pm and that Bishop returned to Wild Park. Defence witnesses at the 1987 trial returned as prosecution witnesses in 2018. At this trial, Altman argued the forensic samples taken as tapings in 1986 were so carefully handled by the police and preserved by scientists that he could present them as a time capsule to prove Bishop's guilt. On the 10th of December 2018, after a nine-week trial, a jury of seven men and five women returned a guilty verdict after two and a half hours of deliberation. On the 11th of December 2018, Bishop received two life sentences with a minimum of 36 years in prison. In May 2021, Jennifer Johnson, Bishop's girlfriend at the time of the murders, was found guilty of perjury and preventing the cause of justice, having admitted she lied about the sweatshirt in the original trial. She was remanded in custody, awaiting sentences. On the 19th of May, Mr Justice Fraser sentenced Johnson to six years in prison, stating that her crimes were all the most serious of the scale. Johnson did not attend the sentence hearing, having refused to do so. She is currently imprisoned at HMP Bronzefield, Britain's highest security prison for women. Bishop died from cancer on the 20th of January 2022 at the age of 55. He had been rushed to hospital from HMP Franklin in County Durham after his condition deteriorated. So there's all the information there on uh, this sad story, really. Um, and again, it's one of those things where, why? Why did it happen? Um, I can't ever get to grips with the mentality of these people and what they do and why they do it. I don't know, I don't understand, and it just, it's frustrating more than anything else. Anyway, I'm obviously not going to say it out of respect, but we, we found the location we're looking for. <sighs> Tough one this today, guys. Karen, Jane, Michelle, Hadaway, born 21st December. 1976, died the 9th of October 1986. Nicola Elizabeth Christine Fellows, born the 22nd of February 1977, died the 9th of October 1986. And 
photographs there of the young girls and such a beautiful monument to them. So there's the final resting place there of Karen and Nicola. I don't know what I can say really. Um, Karen and Nicola, two innocent girls out playing in the field. You know, just lost for words. I can't, I can't imagine what their families must go through and what their friends and people that knew them, you know, and to this day, all those years later, um, I'm just, I want to apologize on behalf of men and the human race really, because you can't, you can't, I'm so sorry girls. You just can't put into words, you know, two innocent kids having the best time of their lives, just playing, just doing their thing. And then that, <sighs> I won't swear, and then that monster, again, we use that wording, monster, again, comes and just ruins their life, ruins their family's lives takes their lives, ruins their family's lives. And uh, I don't know. Anyway, if you remember that story when it came out, I was only a kid myself when, I, when, it, when it came out, um, please leave your comments down below. And um, that's it for another Crime Fast today. See you on the next one. Take it easy.